Hello, you're on Pogo Spot. I'm George. Welcome to another episode on this series Infrastructure Code for Event Driven System in AWS. And today, I'll be writing Terraform code that will stand up an elastic beanstalk infrastructure for my end to end system. And so, if this episode and this channel lines up with your interest, hit the subscribe button and join me in this journey of learning by doing. So, let's start coding. By now, it should be pretty much standard step to pull down all remote changes to my local repository. So I'm going to run this command. And then I'll create a new branch for my changes. Before I start showing you what I'll be doing today, I need to point out a very important item. If you are following along, please make sure that you destroy your infrastructure if you don't need them anymore to minimize costs. I'll be extending the infrastructure code that I have already started building. So let me open my main.tf to start. So last time, I've set up these two resource blocks to build my Docker image and persist it inside AWS ECR. Actually, let me fix this label here and make it more generic. So what I will be doing today is extending this infrastructure code to add the necessary blocks I need to spin up my Elastic Beanstalk. So what I need to do is list down all the items that I need to accomplish today. So I'll start with setting up the resource for my Docker run configuration file. I'm going to use local file resource for this. What this resource will do for me is it will create a file with this file name and the content of this resource will be in JSON format. So let me switch to my browser to quickly show you a sample. So this is how my configuration will look like. So let me go back to my VS Code. So my content property, I will call JSON encode method and then pass a map of all the parameters and values that I need for my configuration file. The container definition section for this configuration will have two sections, one for backend and another one for worker. The image property on each block will need to point to the appropriate repository URL. So I'll be using references to the AWS ECR repository resource. My backend will need to be accessible outside of the container scope. So I need to set up port mappings. I have set the container port source to a variable, so I need to set its definition. So in my variables.tf, now that I have set the variable definition, I'll go back to my main.tf and continue with the rest of the changes. So I will need to add a depends on property on this resource to make sure that my configuration file is created after the Docker image are built and published to ECR. So like I said earlier, when I start running my Terraform commands, a file called docker-run.aws.json file will be created dynamically by this resource. And I don't want this to be included in my Git repository. So I need to update my Git ignore to exclude this file. Now let me go back to my main.tf. The first task done. Now let me go ahead and remove the to-do marker. And then moving on to the next task. For this resource, I need to create a data reference to an archive file resource. What I actually need to do is open my data.tf and set up the data reference in there. All I need is to provide three properties. The type of the archive file, which in my case is a zip file. The source I need to archive or compress, which is a reference to my local resource. And an output path. And that's it. So save my changes. Go back to my main.tf. And what I'm going to do is I'll put a comment in here and then clear out my to-do marker. The next step is creating an S3 bucket to store my Docker configuration files. So with this S3 bucket, I need to set the ACL to private and make sure that I have a server-side encryption. I also need to add tags property for this resource. And let me check which other resources have missing tags. So if I scroll up a little bit, my AWS ECR repository also needs to be tagged. So I'm going to add tags property in there. So that's task three done. So let me go ahead and remove the to-do marker. And now I'll move on to the next task. So what I'll be doing is essentially saving the archive file into the S3 bucket that I created. I'll update this resource block and set the bucket property to point to the S3 bucket that I created earlier. And I also need to set the source property to point to the archive file reference. And to make sure that I have unique file every time I make changes to my Docker run configuration file, I will set the key property of this resource block using a SHA of the contents of my Docker run config file. 
that task is done so let me go ahead and remove my to-do marker before proceeding this is probably a good time to validate my terraform code and commit any changes that i've done before continuing so let me open my terminal and then cd to infrastructure and then run terraform in it and then i'm gonna run terraform validate so i'm getting an error on my configuration file and so let's go ahead and fix that line 59 i'm missing an s in there and then run my validate again and it says reference to undeclared resource so it's probably just the incorrect name of my resource and i've actually called my local file resource docker run config so let me go ahead and fix that and then run terraform validate again so now i'll commit my changes to my local branch and i'd like to give a shout out to one of my subscribers antoine for pointing this very useful shortcut to me in case you don't know to clear your terminal you can actually use Control l which is pretty useful thing to add to our shortcut key arsenal so in here if i want to clear my terminal i'll just go Control l so now let me close my terminal and then go back to the list of tasks the next task that i need to do is creating an instance profile resource this instance profile is what will end up being assigned to the EC2 instances that my Elastic Beanstalk application will set up for me. So as you can see in my code, I need to have an IAM role resource associated to my instance profile before I can start using it. What I need to do is create an AWS IAM role resource. This role resource will not work unless it has the right service role and permissions to assume. So firstly, I need to set the assume role policy property for this resource. To define this assume role policy property, I need to go to my data.tf and define a IAM policy document reference that actually describes the assume policy. So let me go to my data.tf. Now that I have this service assume policy definition, I'll go back to my main.tf and update the property to my IAM role. In order for my Elastic Beanstalk to perform the deployment properly, I also need to attach some managed policies on this IAM role. There are also permissions that I need to set to make sure that my application loads and runs properly after deployment. So I'll go to my data.tf and I'll define a new policy document that will contain all the other permissions that I need to provide to my EC2 instance. So I can now go back to my main.tf and update my IAM role. I will add an inline policy property and plug in the data reference to the policy document that I just set. But now that I have a proper role, I can then go back to my instance profile resource and update the role properly. So that's another task done. So let me go ahead and remove my to-do marker. I've done a lot of changes here, so this would be a good time to validate and commit my changes. So I'll open my terminal and then run Terraform validate. And then I'll commit my changes. So now let me close my terminal and then move on to the next task. This one is very straightforward. So I need to set up this resource with a name and a description along with tags and that's all I need. So that's it. Now let me unset the to-do marker and then move to the next resource. So this resource will be referencing the Elastic Beanstalk application resource that I just created. And this is also where I'll start referencing the S3 object that I have set up earlier on this episode. For this resource, I need to ensure that this version is unique for each Docker run configuration file. So I'll set the name based on the SHA value of the content of my Docker run config. So instead of making multiple calls to the SHA256 function, what I'll do is store the value in a local parameter. So in my local ZTF, I will define a new local parameter and call it Docker run config SHA value. So what this means is I only need to call the Terraform function once and persist the value in a local parameter. So if I go back to my main ZTF, I then need to replace all references to this to the local parameter. Now back to my application version resource. I need to set the bucket and key properties on this resource, which will point to the S3 bucket and S3 object that I have set up earlier. That's the Elastic Beanstalk version resource. So let me go ahead and unset that to-do marker. Next resource to build is the Elastic Beanstalk environment. This resource has an application property that needs to point to the Elastic Beanstalk application resource that I've set earlier. I will be using a multi-container setup, so I need to determine the appropriate platform to use. So to do this, I'll open my terminal. I need to export my AWS profile and then run this AWS CLI. 
I need to look for the ARN that contains multi-container string, which is right there. So I need to copy that ARN. And inside my Elastic Beanstalk environment resource, I'll set the platform ARN property using this value. I need to update the hard-coded region in the string and use my variable instead. I will also add the version label property, which will be pointing to the application version resource. I will also set the CNAME prefix property to customize the prefix of my Elastic Beanstalk endpoint. The next set of properties that I need to set up involve environment settings. The first thing that I'll be adding is a launch configuration setting that defines the instance profile that will be attached to my EC2 instances during deployment. This setting points to the IAM instance profile that I have set up earlier. Another launch configuration setting that I would like to add is the type of instance that I will use in my environment. The value that I've used for this setting will be derived from a variable called instance type. So that means I need to open my variables.tf and set the definition for this new variable. Let me go back to my Elastic Beanstalk environment setup in main.tf and add the other appropriate settings. I also want to define the maximum number of instances that can be set up in my Elastic Beanstalk environment. So the value will be derived from a variable called max instance count. So I need to set the definition for this variable in my variables.tf. So let me go back to my main.tf. And then the next set of settings that I need to add are for my load balancing. My load balancer will be internet facing, so I also need to add this set. For my load balancer health checks, I'll add these settings. If you remember from previous episodes, my backend and worker services require environment variables to be set. So firstly, I'll go to my variables.tf and define a new variable and call it environment variables map. And then back in my main.tf, on the Elastic Beanstalk environment resource, I will interpolate this map variable to set all my environment variables. To ensure that I set the appropriate environment variables using my default main workspace, I'll open my main.tf vars. And then in here, I'll set the environment variables map. Now head back to main.tf. And I think that's the bare minimum configuration that I need to make my application work. So let me unset the to-do marker for this Elastic Beanstalk environment. These next tasks involve setting up an output variable. So if I go and open my outputs.tf, I need to define an output called endpoint URL, which will return the CNAME property that points to the Elastic Beanstalk environment. And that's it. That's the last task in the list. So let me go back to my main.tf, add a comment here. So now let me close my Explorer, open my terminal, and then clear my terminal and run my validation. Before I start running the Terraform commands to stand up my infrastructure in AWS, I need to make some adjustments to my Docker configuration file. But what I need to do is relax the execution of my Docker container and use root user instead. I'll start with backend Docker file. So what I need to do is comment these two lines. And then I also need to do the same thing with my worker Docker file. And then commit my changes to my local repository. So now I'm ready to try to stand up my Elastic Beanstalk infrastructure. And then CD to infrastructure. And then I need to export my AWS profile. And then I also need to export my TF workspace and set that to main. Then run Terraform in it. Now I can run my Terraform plan using my default TF var and set the output to a TF plan file. And then now I'm going to run Terraform apply. Terraform Apply has completed successfully. Let me copy that URL and then switch to my browser and then access the Swagger UI for my backend service. So now let me try generating a thumbnail. So I click Post and then click Execute, copy that file name, click Get. So that also returns response code 200. So I'll copy this request URL, open it in a new tab, and the page is loading fine. So that's my basic Elastic Beanstalk infrastructure for my event-driven system. On the next episode, I'll revisit this infrastructure to determine what can be done to make the infrastructure and application production ready. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Send me some likes if you find this useful. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like my content and help me spread the word about this channel. Until next time, keep learning and stay safe. See ya.